Good day traders, how are we all? All right, so this is gonna be my first video for 2019. And as you guys already know, that this channel isn't one that's just focused on trading knowledge or trading advice. Um, in it, I do talk about a lot of um, spiritual subjects and I, and I touch upon different methods and techniques. Um, you're already aware of the subliminals, the wealth file that's on there as well. In this video, I want to share with you a very simple manifestation technique. It's where I've taken three or four different techniques that I've known for the last four or five years and then I've combined them to come up with a very simple one that I think becomes a lot more powerful, right? This year in 2019, I think is going to be a fantastic year for manifestation. So it's where you guys can really take your life and take charge of it and, and begin to manifest living it exactly how you desire it to be, right? So this technique here is really going to help you achieve all of that. There's probably just a handful of steps, but I've actually break, broken it down into 13 steps, and I'm going to go through it with you now so you understand it. It might be a slightly longer video. It's simply because I want to explain it more in detail. I want you guys to completely understand what it is that you're doing so that the results will start to, to manifest quicker. Firstly, you need to start understanding what your desires are, right? So many people that I meet really don't have a clue as to what it is that they truly want. In their minds, they'll probably say, I want to be happy. I want to have love. I want to have a house. I want to have money. I want to be rich. All those things. But... That's just titles on, on the surface. Not too many people truly know what it is that they tr actually want. If, if I say to you, you want to be happy, fantastic, define happiness. Or if you want a house, okay, tell me about the house. Talk to me about where, which suburb. Is it double story? Is it single story? Is it um, an apartment? Um, what does it look like? How many bedrooms does it have? Um what color paints in there, um, how do you want the living spaces to be, stuff like that. Once you start to envision all of that, you're literally creating the, the energy of it, right? If you don't know what it is and you keep saying to yourself, look, I want to be happy, but I don't actually know what, what that happiness is, um, then what you're doing is you're initially possibly creating an energy that has no meaning. So that's the reason why it's not manifesting for you. Here, I want you to truly feel what your desire is. Um, it might be a set amount of money. So a lot of people say wealth or I want to be rich. Define what that is. So I'll give you a quick example. Say, for instance, you want a um, million dollars. Define what that million dollars means. You might say, um, I, want to, I want to buy a house. Okay, how much do you think that house might be? And you'll say, well, um, a four-bedroom a double story house in the suburbs um, will cost me 700,000 because you've gone on to the real estate websites and you've seen what the average prices are right now for the type of property that you're looking for. And then you'll say, I want it to be in this type of a, a street. It might be a cul-de-sac. It might be uh, a main road or something along those lines. It's got like a bus service that's there or, or five minutes walk to a train station or something along those lines. So you start to really now define what this is. And you know this is going to cost you about 700 grand, including whatever taxes, stamp duty, and that's required. And then you might say for another $100,000, I want to buy a car, a white Porsche Macan um, Turbo, Depending on your, wherever you are in, your, in the world, um, prices will differ. Let's say that costs you another $110,000. So now you've already accounted for $810,000 out of the million that you've, you've, you're desiring. You might then say, okay, I have now looked at um, four index funds or managed funds that I'd like to put $25,000 each into these funds, and that will amount to about $100,000. And that's going to be the, the beginning of the next decade worth of investments for me, right? So now you've accounted for $910,000 of the million that you're looking for. From that point on, you might say $80,000, I want to take my family on a holiday. Where exactly would you go? I want to go to Greece, I want to go to Italy, I want to go to London or wherever it may be. And you might say, this is going to cost me this much money. Define it. Go onto the websites, um, the, your travel sites, and type in 
um, dates. Say, for instance, whenever your next holiday time is going to be, type the dates in and see what the airfares are. Jump onto Booking.com or Agoda or whatever um, hotel booking sites or Airbnb and look at how much the cost of um, accommodation will be in, in those times. So now you can define... Uh, that holiday, it's going to cost you, if I go at this specific time, it's going to cost me $10,000 for airfares for all of my family. It's going to cost me another $5,000 for accommodation. And then you might start looking at it and say, okay, I'm going to keep $5,000 for shopping, food, blah, blah, blah. All up, you know that trip's going to cost you about twenty grand. you have just defined that, right? With money, just quickly, I want you to understand this. When it comes to money... People often think about not possessing it. They, they, they focus on the lack of, of not having it. That's a mistake because all you're doing is you are reinforcing the vibration, the energy of not having something. Or you're probably pushing that energy of manifestation out into the future where I will be happy when that happens. You've got to define that as already ha having happened in the now. So... One of the best ways to do it is instead of focusing on the object itself, so say for instance, um, if you wanna, want a, a, a Porsche Macan, instead of focusing on the car, focus more on the feeling of you know, driving it. What, what would it feel like to drive it? So if you can, go out to a, a, a Porsche dealership and ask them for a test drive, right? Try and see if you can find, so if you want a white one, see if you can find a white one that you can do a test drive in. So once you're in there, feel what it feels like, the power, the grunt, um, the feeling of having, actually having that car, um, driving down your street or whatever it may be, but that's what you want to start to focus upon. It's just the feeling of having it. And prior to that, when we do focus on the lack, it should not be on... Um, not having it, the focus should be on the feeling of not having it. It's like saying when you're thinking about um, lack in food, you might, instead of focusing on um, I don't have food, focus on what it feels like to be hungry and then focus, focus on what it feels like to be full after stuffing yourself with the most delicious food you've ever had. Like I'm sure you've had both experiences in your lifetime. You know, moments where you've gone somewhere and you're starving, but you really can't find the foods that you're looking for. And at that moment, you're hungry, you're desperate. And at that point in time, you're promising yourself, I'll never waste food again. That's short-lived. But I want you to focus on the actual hunger part as opposed to um, lack, right? So that's very important. Now, let's begin. So say, for instance, you have your desire now. And that design might be, and when you guys are starting off with this, please start off small because what you really start to need to start to do is to build your faith in your own ability to achieve these things. Whenever you're working with energy, and, and by that I mean to say just a single thought right now, whatever you're thinking is manifesting as energy, right? So when you have complete faith behind something, when you know, especially when it comes to trading, when you know, if I'm going to put 10 lots down in, on, on this setup right now, you want to have that faith that, you know, the, the sun could rise from the west, but this damn trade is going to go 20, 30, 40, 50 pips in the direction that I've just envisioned it to. That's the sort of faith you want to start to build up within yourself when it comes to manifesting anything you want in life. Okay, so come up with your desire. And start off small, so let's say you want to manifest $1,000 or, or um, I don't know, $100, right? What you could do is to then formulate a question. And the questions usually have to be in a format where you're asking yourself, the universe, how did you manifest this? Or how did something like this happen? So say, for instance, you want to manifest $100. So the question that I would uh, I would ask is... How did I manifest $100? Right? It's just as simple as that. I normally don't leave a question mark on there because that's just going to add to creating the signal. Next step, which is, and, and so before we go any further, formulating the question, the second part is always 
in in um, uh, past tense. Okay, how did this happen? Um, not so much of where with Christy Marie Sheldon's technique of where you're asking what would it take for something to happen. In this method, what I've what I've done is I've changed it to manifest uh, to acknowledge something that's already happened, and you're kind of now disrupting your subconscious mind and your super consciousness in saying how did this actually happen. So the question would be, how did I manifest a uh, hundred dollars, or how do I um, create? Let's do it differently. How do I um, achieve 50 pips easily every week, All right? So something along those lines. Now, let's stick with the, the first one here. The next step is remove the vowels and all duplicate letters, right? So generally speaking, the first thing you want to do, go through this, vowels are A-E-I-O-U, remove them. Right, get rid of the O, get rid of the I, here's another I, get rid of that, get rid of the A, I, E, okay, and this is what we have left. So now the next step is to get rid of any of the duplicate letters. And you guys can invent any method that you want here. This is just something that we're doing to help create like a, a physical manifestation that represents the vibration of whatever your desire is, okay? And so in doing so, we want to be able to say to the subconscious mind, whenever you have this flashing, the subconscious mind automatically becomes aware of what that is, okay? So this, which is all the vowels have been removed, and all the duplicate letters have been removed. And by duplicate letters, again, I just mean if there's two Ds in here, get rid of it. If there's two Ss in there, get rid of both of them. Um, and whatever's left becomes now what we would call your sigil, right? So what you do is get a piece of paper and might be just something that's two, three inches by two, three inches. Um, standard piece of paper, cut it out. And then with possibly a, a thick black pen, um, write these letters down onto the piece of paper and that now becomes your sigil, right? So what you want to do with it now is sit quietly somewhere where you're not going to be disturbed for a while because you're going to now meditate upon this. Now sit down preferably in a chair where you're comfortable, wear loose clothing so you're not kind of disturbed. Hold this piece of paper in your hand. What I find is that almost immediately after writing this down on a piece of paper, when I'm holding the paper, I can begin to feel a lot of energy from this. Okay, Because keep in mind, everything that you physically experience in this world is an energetic manifestation, including now this piece of paper with this written on it. Okay? We've given it meaning by the actual question, and that question has come from past tense of your desire having already manifested. So now this is the actual result of it. Now, we're moving on to step five. So you're sitting quietly on a comfortable chair. You're holding the piece of paper in your hands, preferably the left hand. Left hand is always the hand uh, where the energy flows in, you're receiving, right? So you're preferably, preferably holding it into your left hand because we're now going to activate the, the energy of this signal. This is going to become like the source through which this desire comes into physical manifestation for you. I want you to sit there quietly, close your eyes, and then I want you to move your attention to your body. You don't just feel sitting there. What does it feel like to be sitting there? Uh, what does it feel like to breathe? What if what does your surrounds feel like? In particular, um, what I what I normally do here is I, I notice the room temperature. Am I cold? Am I feeling cold? Is there, you know, like a, if if you've got your windows open, is there a breeze? Can you feel the breeze on your the wind on your your skin? 
on your face, your hair. Um, a lot of the times, it's when you start to focus on your body, you might feel where your hair feels like it's tingling. Um, or, you know, you might just feel um, energy up and down your spine, or you might get um, goosebumps or something along those lines. But just become aware of that. What we're basically doing here is slowing your thought patterns down. You're going to gradually enter now into what's referred to as the theta gamma sync. It's when you, you know when you're going from beta, when your mind is fully awake, to a lower brainwave state, which is where you enter into alpha, where you're somewhat daydreaming, you're relaxed, you're calm, you're daydreaming. When you then enter into theta state, it's usually when you're just so relaxed, you're comfortable. And for a lot of people, as soon as they enter into a theater state, they fall asleep, right? Or they enter into sleep. Usually it's around here when you have the most vivid uh, daydreams or when you are in REM state. So um, you're dreaming, right? But when you have a little bit of experience with meditation, what you'll find is that you can enter this state in a very conscious environment where you, you, your mind is still functioning, you're awake and you're aware of your surrounds, but your brainwave states have kind of fallen. What this is doing is within that theta gamma sync state, the veil between your consciousness, your subconscious and the super consciousness is very thin. So what, what, what we're trying to achieve here is we're taking your object, we're now establishing this in the form of a sigil, and then we're activating this and handing it over to your subconscious and your super consciousness. And anything that you do in that state automatically manifests. There's no questions about it. There's, there's no such thing as do you deserve it, do you not deserve it, karma and all of that crap. It's just basically saying if you put it there, that damn seed is going to sprout and it's going to grow. You're going to get the object of whatever it is you desire. There's no space and time. There's no question there. Um, it's just now going to be a matter of manifesting from there very quickly into your physical world, right? So enter th uh, Theta Gamma Sync. Now, how, do you, how are you going to do it? There's a number of ways to do it. One, if you guys meditate a lot, then many of you will just probably just be able to just sit there and relax, calm yourself down and focus on your breathing. You could you know, breathe in um, for three seconds, hold for three seconds, breathe out for another three seconds. Um, next time, Breathe in for five seconds, hold for five seconds, breathe out for five seconds. See if you can do that for a few minutes. Just sit there carefully, calmly, and do that. For the rest of you that really have a monkey mind all over the place, what you can do is just go onto Google, uh, sorry, not Google, on YouTube, type in Theta Gamma Sync, and there's going to be a number of the frequency videos that are going to come up. Um, pick one that's 10, 20 minutes long. Um, just listen to that on low volume. So sit there quietly, put that on, and just listen. And what that's going to do is that's going to automatically bring your brainwave state down to theta gamma level, and you'll automatically just feel relaxed. So whenever you're ready, then this could be anywhere from a few minutes to about 10 minutes or so, take your earphones off, sit there, and I want you now to start to feel what it feels like to not have the object of your desire. So, for example, remember when I was talking about feeling hungry earlier? If you do not have food, don't think about the lack of food. Uh, think about what it feels like to be hungry. All right? Um, when you then focus on the feeling of hunger, all of the emotions and, and what we're really doing here we're ripping up from within yourself all of the blocks that you're holding on to that constantly manifests the limitation in your life. So when you're feeling the hunger, every single time you've had or been hungry in your life or you haven't had access to food, what's going to happen is those emotions, the sadness, the frustration, the anger, all of that's going to start to surface now. What we're going to do is we're going to cause all those limitations to surface and we're going to transmute that, right? Uh, let's pick another example. Uh, say, for instance, you want money, right? So instead of saying, 
I don't have money, I need money. What I want you to start focusing on is to say, when was the last time you weren't able to pay your rent or your mortgage? Or say, for instance, your kid wanted to go to Macca's and, and there's been a number of people that have, that have had this experience. I know I've had where I've actually rocked up to um, somewhere where I really wanted to have that food. I think it was Macca's or something, um, where I realized that I didn't have my wallet with me. I, I didn't really have any coin, so I'm going through my pockets, I'm going through my car, trying to dress, desperately look for change. There's this one lady that once told me um, she was having a really rough time, and her daughter wanted to eat something at McDonald's. So she took her through drive through and then she realized that once she had ordered, that she didn't actually have the money. So she started desperately going through her car and under her seats and in the, um, the the coin holder area where she just managed to scrape enough money to be able to buy her daughter something really small there. And so I want you to focus on that. What it, what it actually felt like to not have money in that moment, right? Begin to feel that. Like it's going to be something that's uncomfortable, but bring that up. And then once you have that feeling, I want you to look down at this sigil that we've created. So that piece of paper with this written on it, right? So have a look at it. Just gaze at it. And what, what I want you to do is, so say for instance, it's a white piece of paper. And it would be better if you do get something with, with white background, so just a white piece of paper. I want you to focus not on the letters itself, but just the white area. Right, so uh, in actual fact, what you what you're looking for is like a point beyond that white area, and the simplest way for me to say for you to do this is just to gaze at it. You're not looking at anything in particular; you're just gazing at it. So, just a white area. And what you will start to find is that when you're gazing, one, your eyes might start to water. Um, two, you know, your eyes might start to hurt a little bit, but don't put any strain on that. Just gaze. The other thing is you're going to start to notice that this starts to either phase in and out, right? So for, for a lot of people, it, it just, they, they, they describe it as it flashing, right? That's a good thing. Let that happen. Don't try and correct your eyes. Let that happen. Now, and what's going on here, it's very similar to the black square meditation that I've shared with you guys previously. It's basically when that's flashing, two things are happening. One, the energy of it's activating. And two, is where you within yourself are now forcing your senses to utilize like the additional senses that you probably aren't aware of. So uh, forget your, your five normal senses. You are now going through like the power of your third eye, the four quadrants of your third eye that also has additional senses on multiple levels. You're trying to use that now. Via that, you're so easily able to connect with the energy of this, which is going to become the, the object of whatever your desire is, right? So as that's flashing, what I want you to start doing now is, remember the feelings where, where we were talking about where you're focusing on not having that, like, again, feeling hunger? As you're staring at this, the energy is activating, and what I want you to begin doing from that point on is, and whilst you're still looking at the white area, I want you to start to think about that, well, transmuting that feeling of, of not having to the feeling of now having it. So going from being hungry to having had the most delicious meal you've ever had in your life and you're fully stuffed and you're sitting there in just total satisfaction that, oh my God, this was amazing. That sort of feeling. So again, if it's a car, then go from feeling like you don't have a car, you've got nothing to drive anywhere, um, to the feeling you would have when you're in your dream car like a Porsche McCann and you're driving somewhere and you're just feeling amazing about it. It's the feeling of, now, forget about having it, focus on the feeling of what it would feel like when you're actually using that car, right? And this is where if you go to a Porsche dealership just to have a test drive, 
it will help you. But if you have one of those really amazing memories, like, um, sorry, abilities to uh, imagine, um, like my sister does, you get, you're not going to need any of the, the additional props. But for, for everyone else who really has a tough time imagining, it'd be better if you go out there and you test drive or you, you went out there to eat some amazing food or whatever it is that you want to uh, manifest, that you test drove that. Um, so, you know, the amazing feeling. If you've been on an amazing holiday, feel, remember what that feels like to have gone on that amazing holiday. So, again, you'd, you'd be in a space where um, you're feeling frustrated at work. If, if, for example, you wanted to do a holiday, you're feeling frustrated at work, you, you're overworked, you, you desperately need a holiday, and you're feeling like this complete um, burnout happening, right? And then you go from there to remembering what it felt like to be on that last holiday just being free and beautiful weather and near a beach or shopping going and spending you know a whole heap of money and buying whatever you want to buy um, people serving you with food and drink and all of that sort of stuff what did that feel like so that's where you are now transmuting the feeling that you had in lack to now the feeling that you had in fulfillment and all of this whilst you're still gazing at this seagull, right? So the seagull now becomes the source of that transmission power. So it's gone from not having to now having, right? And as, as the seagull's flashed because you're just gazing at it, you've activated it. Now what I want you to do, is once you've done that, I want you to close your eyes with the satisfaction now of having whatever it is that you desire, Close your eyes, and in this one, this this particular step, what I've done is there used to be a, a, a blue room meditation that I used to do many, many years ago, and so what I've done is I've taken a, a portion of that and put it into this. So basically, you're in a room. You don't have to worry, worry too much about what that room is, but I want you to just to accept that that room is the center of the universe where all manifestation happens. Right, so you were there, you're sitting in, in a chair, forget about everything else in that room, and this piece of paper is in your hands, right? You're looking at the piece of paper, and remember you're visualizing this. So you're looking at the piece of paper, and then you see this piece of paper turn into energy, and then that energy gets absorbed into you. It becomes a part of who you are. And whilst that is happening, and you're, you're sitting there, you feel this satisfaction, this gratitude, that what was now separate from you, that was written on a piece of paper and just letters and numbers that represented this desire, now is a part of your vibration. All right, so you could sit there for a few minutes or however long you desire to be with your eyes closed, and then breathe, come out out of it, and you're done. The next step after this, which I haven't written down, is pretty much to get up and go do something mundane. Some people will say they'll grab some food. Others will go for a walk, go do some work that you don't, don't like, do some accounting, um, some gardening or something along those lines, listen to music, whatever it may be. And the whole purpose here is that once you've now created this energy, you forget about it and then let it manifest on, on its own, right? The reason for that is this. We are our greatest enemies when it comes to our own lives. If, for example, you did this and you were focused entirely on, I wonder if this works. I wonder if this will happen. When is it going to happen? How is it going to happen? All of that stuff now becomes new energy that is establishing blocks between where you are and where you'd like to be, right? That's the reason why earlier when we brought those feelings up and we wanted to transmute that. Because if we don't remove those blockages, then everything that you desire is going to eventually manifest. But because of those blockages, it will take time, okay? So it's like the daily wealth sessions that I do. Um, the, a, a very large part of that actually is surfacing and removing blocks. 
for a lot of people, it can take days, some for weeks, some for months. Some people will take absolute years because a lot of the times you don't know what it might possibly be, the block that is holding you back. Um, when, you look, when you look at people that have had regression done, um, some of them have, have actually gone back to a moment in a past life even where um, when they were born, because they didn't automatically cry, where the doctor slapped them on the butt. That was the, the initial trauma that they felt in their lives. And so every other experience throughout their life has been coming or, or has been dictated by just that slap on the butt. So we go through so many things that we need to clear in order to manifest. And for various pe different people, it's going to be so many different things that, that will surface. A lot. For a lot of people, a lot of past life stuff. So this is why these feelings, the transmutation is extremely important. Okay, so this is a possibly a long enough video, um, but please try it. I'm going to put these steps under the video in the info section um, so you can see it there. If you've got any particular questions, um, please do ask. Um, and the other thing is that you can take this and then modify it to fit anything that works for you. So if you're already able to meditate really well, you might not need to enter the theater gamma sync just do whatever you do around those times and you will automatically enter into that okay so i think that should be it for this video um just quickly for those of you that are on the waiting list to want to have um the spiritual sessions and also the um uh, training sessions done um i'm presently traveling but from i i have time available between now and the 7th of March, from, from that onwards, I'm going to be in um, Kuala Lumpur for roughly about two months, two and a half months or so. Um, and I'm doing some spiritual stuff there, some martial arts training and stuff like that. So uh, I won't have that much time available to do the sessions then. So um, you guys have roughly about 10 days to, to book your sessions and have that done before um, I won't be available for a while there. Okay, so... All the best to you guys and happy new year and I'm hoping that 2019 is going, going to be um, an amazing and successful year for all of us. Alright guys.